Hello, my name is Leszek Stelmachowski and this is Fitness Soul Podcast. Today I will chat with Ranoch Donald about his 100 reps challenge. Enjoy. Okay, so oh 100 God. rep challenge, what's that? Okay, 100 rep challenge essentially comes in two pieces. There's 100 reps, which is really about everyday activity, just about getting moving. Um, we can make it prescriptive, we can make it about specific moves, or we can essentially say that this ongoing 100 rep challenge I've got, which is about everyday activity, um, today it might be that I'm going to take the stairs rather than take the lift. It can be the simple things like, one of my favourites is never using a shopping trolley, mm -hmm. always using baskets. You don't think that's a big thing. but So 100 rep challenge is, is, is finding different ways over the course of a day to increase the amount of movement that you do. Okay. The actual challenge itself, again, is a personal one. Um, when I originally did workshops, I found that people would come along and learn a set of skills, but would struggle as to how to put these together effectively. And for the average human being, we don't need convoluted periodization. We just need consistent practical effort. So what we did was um, we set a baseline of activity in terms of what the average person should be able to train for and do. Um, and the original challenge was 10 pull-ups, 10 dead hang pull-ups, so pull 30 push-ups and 60 body weight squats. So what we did was we, we had 100 reps. Um, the three, three exercises. That was it. The, you can start to get into anything you want, but just as a baseline, if you're talking about someone who's starting training out, they, they may already be doing weight training, they may be running, but they want a set of core exercises that over a period of time will build a baseline of, of strength and conditioning. They're the key ones. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can mix and match that as you go. The reason they're done in that way is obviously it's much harder to pull yourself up in terms of your own body weight than it is to do a squat. So is it is it for everyone? So everyone can... can Abs because Abs I, I, yeah. cannot, I, I can do maybe 10, but I take someone who's coming through the door uh, cannot do it. No, abs absolutely. It is for everyone because it's all scalable. So th that that 100 rep challenge of 10, 30, 60 is something you work towards and then once you have it, you maintain it. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. It's just you're always able to do this straight out of the bag. It's just... This you know, is you, yeah, abs absolutely. And maintaining it is much, much easier than getting to it. So mm -hmm. once you got it, um, we spoke about this before, in fact, this idea of creating a fire and keeping it lit. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to keep a fire lit than it is to have to start a new fire every day. So what's, what's after this? Are, are you trying to make the time faster or are you it, there's a adding, whole, adding there's reps? A whole, there's a whole combination of things. The, the, the reps, interestingly enough, despite the fact it's called a 100 rep challenge, the rep aspect, aspect kind of becomes academic. It's a baseline to get you going. 100 rep challenge is not a, the answer, it's an answer. It's an on-ramp to other activity. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what's next, you might do the 100 rep challenge over a period of weeks and months, become almost an expert in those three moves, which believe me, if you if you train them consistently, the, the, the level of strength and mobility that you've got will skyrocket. But again, people want things, can't have a tendency to yeah. look for things that are novel. Um, if we focus on those drills, at the end of it, the baseline of strength that we've got that we can tap into means it's much easier to then say, well, actually, I'm going to look at um, Olympic lifting. I'm not saying that 100 reps is going to allow you to Olympic lift, but if you have a baseline of functional strength, suddenly something like Olympic lifting is a lot less intimidating. If you can bang out 10 pull-ups, 30 push-ups, 60 bodyweight squats, how long, easily. How long it takes like for the best guys? Well, th that's where the challenge comes in. Okay. 100 yeah. reps, we have this idea of everyday activity, which I said can can be prescriptive, you're going to do X, Y, and Z, or can simply be the idea that you're going to look for opportunities for everyday activity, which mm -hmm. we keep repeating, everyday activity, that's the key. Um, in terms of the challenge, when we, when we host an actual challenge, um, the, we, we set 100 seconds on a stopwatch and we count down. You've got 100 seconds to do as many reps, good reps, as you can. Um, we're very strict in terms of the competition challenge level, if you like, I don't want to say competition, mm -hmm. but the challenge level that people are moving effectively. So we'll have a countdown, 100 seconds, da, 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 so no kicking, it, kick pull ups. No, no kipping, um, you know, for example, a push up. We do push ups the same way people push cars. Okay. Um, nobody pushes a car with their hands out here. Yeah. 
we push here, and that's you know that's a very protective and chest, chest to the ground. Um, more more or less. I mean, we're we're strict, um, but we're not ruthless. Um, under pressure, people's movement degrades quite quickly. Um, you know, when we talk about those three moves, the big gross movements. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's there's no excuse for not doing them well if you practice properly. The pull ups are from dead hand, so you start in a dead hand, chin over bar, back down again. Um, push-ups, elbows in, the entire body is connected um, and you'll often see people doing really short range push-ups with their elbows out or you'll see them only moving their upper body and actually the, the and body... And the hips are staying the yeah. same place. And yeah, the, we saw it. Yeah, yeah. All, 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 all the time. And the easiest way to explain that to people is imagine your body's a door and your feet are the hinges. Mm -hmm. The whole door moves. It's not like it's not like a barn door yeah. for horses. The whole body <laughs> moves. Yeah, exactly. Um, and very often, again, something you and I have spoken about. Um, when someone shows you the fix, it can be incredibly simple, but it can drastically alter how you move. Mm -hmm. So it's back to this idea of it all being skill based, and it having just certain key principles that you can carry into whatever activity you do next because essentially what you want is you want a strong healthy healthy being one of the key components fit body that you can then take into your first 5k 10k mm -hmm. cycling you know krav maga whatever it is you choose to do next the basic fundamentals of this are to create an on-ramp to other activities but they're always there as the bedrock of what you do fantastic i you've been doing this for how long now the, the 100 rep challenge yes. the first one um, started I think back in 2009 or 10 uh, and it was literally on the back of, of um, uh, a couple of workshops and it was actually trainers who'd mm -hmm. come and said oh, we, we've got these tools we skills these skills now but we're not quite sure what to do with them um, and I said at the time okay let's make this as simple as it possibly can be so if you've got somebody who can't do 20 repetitions of a particular drill. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about kettlebells here. Mm -hmm. You start with a pyramid of one, two, three, four, five, and four, three, two, one, mm -hmm. or a ladder of one, two, three, four, five, and that's it. You build volume incrementally. So rather than saying we're doing three sets of 10 or whatever it is, you start one rep or you start with two and you just slowly add bit by bit. Um, so yeah, on the, on the back of those workshops, we created a really, really simple format. Um, I started to create what I called one tool workouts, which were for people who were maybe training at home in between gym sessions and they had a single kettlebell or a sandbag or mm -hmm. maybe a pair of dumbbells to create a workout that you would use just using that one tool start to finish and get it done. Um, and again, working on different levels um, of, of intensity, working on speed. There are variables that you can play with. With body weight training, it's how fast, it's mm -hmm. the range of the reps. You know, it's, um, we, we do things like stutter reps where we stagger reps back up and down. Right. But these are all just little tools and tricks which, which fool your body into moving. Um, the, the, the kind of bottom line and baseline with this stuff is just straightforward functional movement. Push, pull, squat. So, so you did this for like six years and I think you, you saw so many different people with different, you, you saw athletes who are well trained and you see well, the fun, the, just, the, the yeah. funny the funny thing with it is guys who, who um, when we did this at Body Power for example, there were lots of bodybuilders there mm -hmm. and they gave us a wide berth um, because they're big, big guys you know, and the, the idea of them perhaps doing pull ups or you know, it's just it's, just, it's not in their repertoire, I understand it uh -huh. Um the second year that we were there and we were running the bodyweight training arena, yep. um, they had a lot of um, gymnasts there and they couldn't wait to come and do this stuff. This is and you looked guys. at these guys at a high level and they just, they wiped the floor with people and we had some guys, a couple of guys who did parkour, uh -huh. um, some martial artists. But the most interesting thing was even guys who train at a high level would come along and say, whoa, this is really hard. Uh -huh. You know, when somebody's standing beside you telling you that your body weight squat doesn't count and you're kind of training at a high level, that's t it's a bitter pill to swallow. It's a tough one. Um, so this is like, this is athletes, but average job. Someone, is it still how it is for this person? Absolutely. You, have you seen big transformation? In huge, it? huge. Because again, it's, it's back to this, this business of, of everyday activity and movement. Um, we spend so much of our time sitting. We sit in cars going to work, we sit down at work, we get home, we sit down again. Um, you know, as I said, 
earlier, we have this kind of culture of convenience that makes doing nothing very, very easy. Mm -hmm. The minute you kind of set somebody in motion, um, they can very often maintain that motion and get better and better and better incrementally, mm -hmm. little by little, bit by bit. So to get someone who... Nothing, nothing makes me happier than to have someone say, I'd like to do a 100 rep challenge, but I can't do a push-up. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's get you doing a push-up. Because you can. It's a skill. It's not down to how okay. strong you are. It's a combination of things. Of course, strength matters. Of course, your overall body weight matters. But there's, whatever you've got going on, mm -hmm. we can get you started. And once you're started, the great thing about this as a skill base is you can then go and do it and get better. So let's say I cannot... I, I know you cannot do this way, but let, let's try it. I cannot do pull-up. Okay. I cannot do pull-up today. I can hang there. There's no way I can pull up. How long do you think it will take me to do first pull-up? Your first pull-up? Yeah. Depends on all manner From of things. Yeah. yeah. Depends on all manner of things. Like, like you say, everybody's individual. Everybody's different. Um, some people will get it within the first session. Really? Yeah, because, okay. it, because, the because they've not been shown how to connect their body in a way that they can actually lift mm -hmm. themselves up. And I, I know you as a coach are capable of getting somebody to do something they can't do because I saw it with Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? He couldn't... He'd not done... Um, the, the muscle up. Do? Muscle, muscle up. Yeah. Muscle up, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And he so, tried, mm -hmm. but you showed him one thing and within two minutes the guy did his first muscle up. And muscle up, for many people, is kind of the gold standard of body weight movement. So... Yeah. So, okay. If you look at the gymnast, it's yeah, warm up then, for them. But, but, yeah, but, it's, but then you look at, but you look, exactly. But you look at Pete, you know, he's fit, does lots of body weight training, you know. So he, he, he's already got his 100 rep baseline, if you like. If you look at somebody who um, their activity is consisted of walking or maybe on a treadmill or cycling or whatever it might be, and they're new to body weight training, mm -hmm. um, the, the transformation transition is incredibly fast. Because they're, you know, they're learning body weight drills and they're learning it as a skill and they get good very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And they will go from two or three push-ups to ten very, very quickly. The pull-up is a hard one. So depending where they are in the scheme of things, um, if, there's, there's, if there's no movement going on there at all, then we'll start with reverse rows. And if somebody can't do reverse rows, then we'll do something called let-me-ins, okay. which is a, a, a drill I got from do Mark Lauren, who does You Are Your, you are your Own Gym. Mm -hmm. Fantastic body weight book. Which is just... So standing at the door and pulling yourself forward. Uh -huh. Once you get that mechanism going, you understand what's happening here in terms of this pulling and where the shoulders need to be mm -hmm. and that you are actually shifting your own body weight and from there to reverse so rows. So this and so, yeah. progression for everyone. And Yeah, and that applies to every drill. The, the biggest one that we see the quickest change with are body weight squats. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it can be a whole combination of things. It can be people turning up in um, training shoes that have huge heels on them, who pitch forward, um, it can be people with ankle issues, with hip issues. Um, the, the squat is such an equaliser, uh, particularly for people who spend huge amounts of their day sitting, um, to get them to do body weight squats. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go down this route of, you know, it's, it's, it's the answer to all our problems in Western <laughs> civilization because it's not. And sitting is not, you know, this horrible disease. We've done it for, for hundreds of years now, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but... There are antidotes to the the things that we do that are deleterious to our, our overall well-being. Um, Push-pull squat are three of those things. So if you get someone who can't squat, it's not that they can't squat. It's just they've not done it. Their body's forgotten that skill. There's kind of motor amnesia there. Maybe it, someone showed them the wrong way of doing it. Yeah, that. yeah. And if, the, the funny thing is, you know, it, all movement is natural. Mm -hmm just so happens some natural movement isn't very good for you <laughs> if we're doing it it's natural yeah. there's there's there's, uh -huh. there's no escaping that but when you when somebody takes time to look at how you move and how you squat um there's drills that we do and uh, again if you have somebody lie on their back and somebody else take their feet Mm -hmm. and bend their and they bend their knees they'll invariably get into a full squat position lying on their back try standing them up they'll either fall backwards or fall, fall, fall forwards and again it's because of the disconnection between the ankle the knee and the hip so you just spend a bit of time working on that once people learn to squat um, body weight below parallel naturally um, they will find very often that other issues that they've got physically start to 
started to disappear in a lot of respects. Lower back pain, which often leads to shoulder pain. To I mean, that's not my field, mm -hmm. but I've seen it time and time again with people who start to squat. Um, the knock-on effect is huge. And it also starts to promote a confidence in movement. And so I, I, just coming back to what you said, it's like, so basically if someone got the shoulder problem or the hip problem, squatting is good for you, yeah? And movement full stop is good. So you shouldn't just, because many times you go to doctor and I, I, come, I have people coming down here and they're saying, since my doctor just, I've got problems with my hip, yeah? I cannot do anything. I can, I'm sorry. I, I, I've been told to stay in, 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 at home. Yeah, yeah. Is it, is, why? Um, is it like protective? Yeah, I mean, it is, it, 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 it is protective and um, it's, I find it really tough because I'm not a clinician. Um, I don't deal with people on that level. Um, and, and when, if I come across somebody who's really struggling and in pain, I'm fortunate enough to have other people that I can defer them to. Mm -hmm. But very often, um, it's just, it's a fear of movement. And that fear translates into all manner of things. Um, when, when you see people start to become protective about how they move, mm -hmm. then all movement becomes an issue. When you see people start to blossom with confidence in terms of how they move, mm -hmm. everything starts to change. I mean, we've we've there's, I do lots of floor drills, standing up drills, and falling over drills, and sometimes I look at that stuff and I think, what's the value of it? And then I realise the value of it is, as we get older, part of that protective business. If you look at people sixty five mm -hmm. plus, um, who slips, trips, and falls, hip breakages, these things become huge. Um, and potentially lethal for a lot of people. And you can train for it, isn't it? To, to prevent it? Absolutely. You, of course Abs you can. Abs absolutely. And it's the confidence to actually negotiate with your body in space and time. You know, the, the heart of proprioception is knowing where your body is in space Broken and time. Broken wrist, yeah, when people drop in this exactly. way. Down exactly, exactly. And, you know, I've seen, I've seen very skilled movement you know, people with skilled movement, for example, with a martial arts background, mm -hmm. who've done kind of break falls and stuff. Um, but actually falling on hard surface is a very, very particular kind of set of movements. The only way you can kind of learn it is if you do it. You have to do it. Yeah, so yeah. you just get on and do it. Uh -huh. uh, you know, but most people would kind of think, mm, no, it's, 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 it's mm -hmm. dangerous. No, not being able to do it is dangerous. Learning the simple skill of rolling and moving and standing, you know, these, these are, again, the life skills. Mm -hmm. But because we're not called upon to use them, because we're not walking through the forest, finding the food and pulling, getting the water and uh -huh. chopping the wood, you know, we, we become increasingly dysfunctional. But I, I think, you know, I, I'm a doctor at this moment, yeah, and I've got this patient with, with shoulder injury. And I've been to many classes and I know these guys, many of them, they will try to teach me some crazy stuff. So I rather say to my patient, listen, you better do nothing because you might even injure yourself more. It's, I think it's the way of finding yeah, people I, no, who can... I, I, I would send, if I had a doctor, I know you, I would send all my patients to you because I know they're in good hands. But Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tricky because, you know, having a, a, you know, uh, an issue that impacts how you move is not a disease. You know, you, you, I've dislocated this shoulder twice and for, for years was incredibly protective mm -hmm. because, you know, a lot of my background was kind of martial arts based and I was left laid and th this became a real issue for me mm -hmm. because I felt always, was always worried about this and, you know, and damaging it. Um, my own story is, you know, I got back into, you know, the, the idea of being healthy and fit again because I broke my leg, you know, and I didn't do that in a dramatic way. I did it wearing flip-flops and wet grass chasing a dog. <laughs> but but the, up, the, upshot, the upshot of that was... You should, when, you should have some better stuff I, I've that. tried it before. I've tried it before. It was like rock climbing in the Pyrenees or something. But no, literally over on the ankle, boom. Um, this, is, this is the title for this podcast, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Run of Dom <laughs> injure himself when climbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When <laughs> and my transformation yeah, happens yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. When I was falling, <laughs> I had this dream. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> yeah, body weight movement. <laughs> um, when I had the cast on, um, I thought, minute this cast comes off, that's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get. You know, I've got three. I had three youngish children at that point. They're, mm -hmm. they're all, they're all older now, but. Um, at that time, I gave myself all the kind of excuses that parents do that, you know, I'm busy and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'll get back to training. And so you yeah. get you get to your mid 40s and your mindset is that of a 25 year old who used to do this, that and the next thing. But that was 20 years. It was a, literally a lifetime ago. You don't have, you know, you've not kept those skills up. And as a consequence, it's easier to think about your glory days than it is to uh, where you've wound up now. Mm -hmm. So. 
I got the cast off and that was worse because suddenly I had this kind of withered leg and I thought, this is terrible. What am I going to do? So I went to physio and mm-hmm. bless them. You know, they, they gave me a couple of exercises that I had to go and do with a band. And it was, I really thought, is that it? Mm-hmm. That's the extent of this aftercare, you know? So I went full circle back to how I used to train um, when I was in my teens, body weight training, a little bit of weight training. And I came across Pavel Tsatsalin mm-hmm. and I came across the kettlebell, didn't have a kettlebell, so made one out of a Lenore container, filled it with sand and used that. Um, and then, purely as a personal thing, decided I would go to Denmark and do the RKC, mm-hmm. um, which I did. And all of that was just my, very much my journey, what I'm doing, kind of, there was no end goal in sight with that I just wanted to to reinvigorate how I moved and those skills Um, so thinking about this person who's got this physical issue whatever it might be if there's a will there to do something about it it can start with the smallest thing Um, when we teach mobility drills if you have somebody who can't move their shoulder Mm -hmm. uh, you know and struggles at the elbow and has got problems with the wrist, then you start here, you know? And if you can move your fingers, then you'll find that the wrist then, starts to come along and then the rest of the body comes into play. And I, I saw you many times moving and it's, you're moving very, very well, even though you had so many... I didn't know you've got the broken leg and dislocated shoulder. Yeah, but you know, I, but the interesting thing is that leg break yeah. was 10 years ago. Okay. It's it's done and dusted and you know But you could you could stay there and you, you could be one of these people who's saying, Listen, I used to run marathons but I have broken my leg and this is it. I, 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 I cannot I, do. I, I, I can't. Abs- absolutely. And it's back to this protective thing that we have going on mm-hmm. that we th- suddenly we are defined by the issues of the injuries that we've got. And if you go down the traditional route um, the answer will be ibuprofen, the answer will be rest, the answer will be not moving, the mm-hmm. answer will be ice packs, the answer will be everything except the the thing that I think probably has the potential to have the biggest impact, which is move. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a lot of debate recently about the, the benefits of, 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 of walking. And, and as far as I'm concerned, for the average person, that's the fundamental start of everything. You know, yeah. walk, you know... I, turning into the occasional run. So if you want to go to gym, walk to the gym first. And yeah. even, even don't go to the gym, but walk there, come back. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And I think that these things are hugely important, but we kind of downgrade them because we go back to what we were talking about earlier. Uh-huh. It's, not, it's not novel, you know? It's not fancy. And you, then you if it. I'm going to train and I've got a limited amount of time during the week, then I'm going to go and do something that just absolutely, you know, smashes me. And it's just like, why, why, why? If you're not getting medals mm-hmm. and making money out of beating yourself up, then you really want to so have you, a think so about it. So you believe it's sh- you shouldn't train to failure? Oh, no. I think perform to failure. Uh-huh. I mean, this is, again, one of the keys within 100 reps and one of the things we try to, try to get across all the time is there's kind of a, there's a continuum of movement and it starts with practice. And practice is the fundamental basis of everything. Mm-hmm. You have a skill and you practice it. Practice, Daily? practice. Yeah, but no. whatever that skill might be. Um, again, there's lots of nonsense spoken about. It takes 10,000 hours to become a master at this, that, and the next thing. It doesn't take 10,000 hours to master swinging a kettlebell. But daily practice, you'll get good at it. And the transfer of that into doing a snatch, for example, Mm -hmm. leads to another skill set. So practice, no matter what. You can have bad practice days, you can have good practice days, but occasionally you'll have progress. So every so often we're on the plateau and suddenly there's a bit of progress. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we go three steps forward, but we take two steps back. But it's still progress. Mm -hmm. So we keep going, chug, 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 chug. Now... Every so often, there's an opportunity for performance, and we only go there occasionally. And that's, for example, the challenge part of a 100 rep challenge. Mm-hmm. So, if you and I started 100 rep challenge today, you know, we check each other out, see how we're doing with the reps, coach each other through the movement, and say, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to train this over the next month. We will practice, we'll see incremental progress, and then in a month's time, we'll go, 
Okay. We'll, we'll try. Yeah? Exactly. And that's the performance. So is it important to like set the performance goals? I think from what I notice, a lot of people, they just starting doing something and they already say, I want to run marathon under three hours. And this breaks everything because many yeah. times they just, they got this in mind and they're pushing too hard. They're doing things which they shouldn't do. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's almost like they're trying to play catch up with everything that they've not done. So, exactly. you know, when, when you're inactive, it's easy to kind of imagine that the consequences of that inactivity are going to happen in some distant future. And they're not. They happen every day. Um, uh, just slowly, slowly, there's this little creep that takes place that eventually gets you to the stage where you turn around and you go, whoa, how did that happen? The positive aspect of, of, of you know, effective habits mm -hmm. does exactly the same thing. Just so happens you turn around one day and go, wow, how did that happen? You know, you, you make your choice, you know. All of this is about lifestyle and not lifestyle as in, you know, lifestyle magazines, but lifestyle as in the conscious choices that you make in terms of, you know, what's important for you. Um, when people take on a, a, a challenge that is, is way beyond what they, they can currently do, their, their ability and their capability are out of sync. You've got to get ability closer to capability you've got to marry those two things and the only way that you can do that is being sensitive to how you feel mm -hmm. um again it's one of those things within within 100 reps over the period of a month when we set the challenge at the end of it we time it so we basically say you've got 100 seconds in which to do your so best got to and that is tough but it's only a hundred seconds. No one's no one's gonna get messed up. Yeah. Um, so it sets a very accessible, doable benchmark that you know, however, whatever you score on that, it's your score, you did it. Um, over the that period of a month, you have opportunities to just test yourself. But every time you test yourself, you're doing it in, in a very kind of proactive and, and sympathetic way. It's not that you just you it's not you constantly jumping into the shark tank and, 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 and you know mm -hmm. letting yourself keep get beat up. And I think that this is really important because I see it time and time again, you know, yesterday was legs day, I can't walk today. If somebody somewhere is going to give you some money and a prize for legs day, then that's really, really cool. But if you've just blown out a day because you're in bits, <laughs> you know, where are you going with this? I think whatever activity you choose to do passionately, fantastic, do it. You know, whether, you know, you, you're talking about the, the idea of doing like a, an Ironman or something along mm -hmm. those lines. Hugely, hugely challenging. But you set that as a personal challenge over a period of time to work towards um, not to the exclusion of all the other aspects of your life. And that's where this stuff becomes really unhealthy. Um, we all know middle-aged guys who suddenly throw everything that they've got against a, a, an activity and it, suddenly it becomes them. Like for me, it's so easy. You know, I, when I do something, when I finish doing whatever, I go for cycling. At this moment, cycling and running is my thing. I want to come back home and I want to feel better than before. You know? and, and if I do feel better... I know I've done a good job. Yeah. If I feel like crap and I want to lay down and sleep for five hours, it's probably I overdo it. And that, that's the, that is absolutely the key with this. It's about being kind of mission ready all the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to be effective, um, if you want to be able to contribute ongoing, then you have to be healthy and well and fit. Mm -hmm. And those are a combination of things. Fitness often happens to the exclusion of health um, because people choose to go and beat themselves up and, you know, they need this supplement and that supplement. It's all a kind of an illusion, really, you know. The fundamentals of health and well-being are really simple. It's how you eat, it's how you move, and it's how you recover. How you eat should start first and foremost with do you cook your own food from natural raw ingredients? Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing that, then the first thing you should do before you start worrying about this shake and this weight loss program and this and that is you should learn to cook. Yeah. That's it. It's really That's simple. It. And learn to cook scrambled eggs. Learn to cook a steak. These are fundamental things. Most people can't cook scrambled eggs. They mm -hmm. can make rubber out of eggs, but actually to cook a meal that is palatable, not just for you, but for somebody else. Because when you cook your own food, you'll eat any old crap. But, you know... Mm -hmm. Can you make food for other people that they'd actually want to sit down and eat? Um, and again, really simple things. Um, people hate the word hydrate, but, you know, drinking enough water. That's a really fundamental, basic thing. For people who elect 
to actually do it, Mm-hmm. You suddenly go, wow, how did I not know about this before? Because it suddenly it has this profound effect. And all you did was... I spoke to your friend in here a few, months, a few weeks ago, Andrew. Is it Andy? Sorry. Andy. Yeah, yeah. MacArthur. And he was, he was saying exactly the same thing, that you you taught him how to cook, isn't it? You, you've been... Yeah, he, you've co- been, he yeah. cooked, but... He cooked, but, but um, uh, you know, I think cooking for him was a chore. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you show somebody how to roast vegetables or pan fry asparagus or, you know, here's, okay, here's a tip for you. Yeah. Um, simplest thing in the world, avocado, mm-hmm. smoked salt, sherry vinegar. Those three ingredients, the perfect meal. It's amazing. And it's literally just smoked salt. Take some mm-hmm. food. We want, everybody seems to want to make avocados in a chocolate mousse at the moment. I don't understand why. <laughs> Which uh, is quite good, you have to admit. <laughs> I, know, I, can't, I can't go with it, I can't go with it. But the thing is, um, making simple food is, is, is really, really easy. So, okay, you've got this avocado, just finished because I'm... Uh, avocado, yeah, well, yeah. avocado, you just scoop it out, you uh-huh. just add smoked salt. So, finishing salt... Well, it's, re- it really has sim- to be smoked. It doesn't have to be, but smoked, but molden. Okay. Molden... F- Finishing salt. Yeah. Again, people use molden and they chuck it in, you know, water for pasta, for example. It's pointless. Just use regular salt. Yeah. Molden salt is a finishing salt. So that's that's me being a pretentious cookie. But the the the, the fact is, um, knowing simple things that make ordinary bring out the best in in foods. Mm-hmm. Knowing how to lose, use lemon juice and vinegar and just these simple things, they have a profound effect. We are so used to sticking piercing the film. Sticking it in a microwave, um, the 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 supermarkets are really good at making us feel that these meals are healthy, um, because they they've got you know uh, no uh, no uh, you know, no things added yeah yeah no things added or you know they they're counting calories or they've got lots of protein in them which is obviously great <laughs> as we all now know but the pro- the problem with that stuff is food that's made. Um, in containers isn't mm-hmm. made in a kitchen it's made in a laboratory or a factory um, and you can stay in there for like three months yeah exactly yeah. exactly and even the freshest of the fresh stuff is, is they've arrived at that as something that you don't have any active participation in preparing um, that that in itself is bad enough we then take our ready meal or whatever it is that we've we've heated up and then we sit down and we watch cooking shows on TV that make us feel incapable yeah. because these people are, are doing these amazing dishes with you know this juice of this and you know it, and it's nuts we've become we, we're, we are in danger of becoming um, a, a culture of observer observers mm-hmm. who just you know we want the book and the t-shirt and the, and the TV program but don't, we don't want to but actually we don't want to apply that yeah, yeah which is... and that you know you can see it across the board um, I had some friends who did Ninja Warrior mm-hmm. recently and I, I love it. I think it's it's fantastic. It's 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 fun and it's exciting and it's for most people. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do a Ninja Warrior course, mm-hmm. but I'd love to try. And if that gets people out running around in a park, then that's fantastic. But the majority of people will watch Ninja Warrior uh, just as a spectator sport. With a beer in the hand. Yeah, and that's yeah. unfortunate because take any person out to a, an open environment and encourage them to run around. And they will invariably say, God, I was brilliant. I don't know why I don't do this more often. Uh-huh. So, you know, so eating, moving. So we've got, we've got the recipe for, for, for eating, then moving. Very simple. And that is get out one, one foot in front of mm-hmm. the other. You know, and I'm not talking here about people who uh, have huge clinical issues with obesity and etc. That's not my bag. But we need to stem the flow of people who are heading in that direction and the easiest way to do that is to find a friend and go for a walk. There are walking groups being set up all over the country now. Um, Michael Moore, the filmmaker, um, Mm -hmm. uh, who is an unusual character uh, in that here's a guy who's overweight and who tweeted that he was going out for a walk one night and suddenly his Twitter feed blew up with all these people over the US saying, Uh well, I'm going to go out for a walk. And we are now, I think, 18 months later or something. And he goes out walk and walks daily. Uh-huh. And all these people on his Twitter feed talk about their various walks. And he's lost a ton of weight. Yeah. Um, and it's just purely from that process. What's his name again? Michael Moore. Michael Moore. Check it out because he I has the most he... fantastic post about deciding to go out one day for a walk. And he's created, literally created a movement 
in the States of people who have just decided to go for a walk. Was it the guy behind some documentary movies? On Bowling the- for Columbine, um, or a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah I, stuff. I think I saw something. And he's a controversial yeah. character and he upsets a lot of people. But there he's done something that is just so incredibly practical. He's just encouraged everybody. And easy. Yeah, and exactly, exactly. And I guarantee you that there will be a number of people who will have taken those first steps and as a consequence will have decided to go for a hike at the weekend. And then on the back that's, of that might have decided that they want to go camping and cycling. That's fantastic. You know, and then, back into activities and skills rather than three sets of ten, <laughs> you know. Three sets of ten is great, but it's such a small part of the overall picture, which yeah. is back to this activity. Um, okay, I, I need to stop you for a second. I know you can talk forever, but we're just getting almost like it's almost yeah, yeah. an hour now. So it's almost an hour. <laughs> We've been talking. God help you edit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, just quick one. How someone can get involved with hundred challenge? How hundred reps challenge? Hundred reps. What, rep what cha- they do? Hundred rep challenge. Website. Okay. 100repchallenge.com is the website. We're in the process of, process of actually reinvigorating that. We'll put it under the under putting a lot more links, yeah. a lot more effective information in there. Um, on Facebook, there's a 100 Rep Challenge group. There's mm-hmm. about 4,600 people on there now, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, we have a, uh, different workouts that we put up there. And it, basically, it's a community. If, as an individual, you want to participate, come to the, the 100 Rep um, Challenge Facebook page. Say hi. Um, mm-hmm. Tell us a bit about yourself, and we will help you make those first steps. If you are gym and you want to run it again just get in touch Mm -hmm. um i mean those those are the key ways we're going to be at the fitness festival in edinburgh in edinburgh and and that's in june at the end of june and then we are going to be at the scottish fitness expo which is Is which is in glasgow at the Uh end of august so those will be events where people can come um participate in the challenge itself Mm -hmm. we're going to have some interesting people turn up to that because this starts with one one pull up or one push up by the time we get to august i think we're going to have some people who are pretty serious about Mm -hmm. making their mark within those hundred seconds but it's doable for everybody and if you turn up at those events come and see us introduce yourself if you can't do a push up can't do a pull up can't do a squat you are exactly the person that we want to meet and you you will help uh, absolutely and and if if you can't do that then let us know where you are because we we've got friends and family all over the place um there's somebody out there who's in the same situation with you who, who want to train with you or a coach out there who will want to help mm-hmm. um so it starts with the basics and the fundamentals that is it that's fantastic so it's easy <laughs> thank you very much straightforward straightforward thank you very much thank Donna, you very much coming. thank awesome. you very much cheers, cheers. <laughs> right Cut, cut. <laughs> I find the easiest way to do this is it just to sit and chat and then you have to go back and do the laborious process of editing it. Yeah, I think.